Hey everybody, how's it going? This is John Breeden. It is February 19th, 2021. It is Friday, and you know what that means. We have the preview for this upcoming race weekend from the Daytona Road Course. We have tonight the Truck Series race coming on tonight at 7.30. Tomorrow is the NASCAR Xfinity race from the Daytona Road Course at 5 o'clock. And then, of course, the Cup race on Sunday from the Daytona Road Course, 3 o'clock. All of those times, Eastern Time. And so, before we get to that, however, I do have some Daytona 500 fallout. And the big news from today is that, well, for, at least from this week, is that Joey Logano and Brad Keselowski, they are not on talking terms. They've not been talking to each other ever since Daytona. And... This is a article from NASCAR.com. As of Friday morning, Team Penske teammates Joey Logano and Brad Keselowski have not discussed the last lap crash in the Daytona 500 that ended both of their chances at winning the 2021 NASCAR Cup Series season opener. But they're going to talk before Sunday's race on the Daytona road course, and Logano expects everything is going to be okay. And so, basically, Logano goes in here and he talks about how Teammates, it's it's like being married. You you're you're married. You don't just leave. You gotta figure things out. So that's the big story. I mean, I'm sure they will get things figured out. And it's odd because I did watch the NASCAR uh, radioactive, the Fox radioactive, and Brad Keselowski said that son of a bitch he wrecked me for the win. And I always thought he was talking about McDowell, but. I mean, perhaps he was talking about Joey when he came down and blocked and said he wrecked him. But, um, yeah, I mean, tough situation for those guys. They're two teammates. And luckily, though, it looks like they are going to get fi things figured out. And, I mean, to me, when I watched it, it didn't even look like Joey's fault or Brad's fault. I mean, Brad was making a move, and Joey kind of came down to cover him. But then McDowell hit Brad, and they both uh, ran into each other. So... Yeah, I'm kind of surprised. I figured Brad would be more mad at McDowell, but he seems to not be happy with Joey Logano. So, and I mean, as as far as Joey goes, I mean, if he's upset at Brad, it's like, I mean, he was going for the win, you know. And and Logano was the sitting duck, and it was just a matter of time before he was going to get past. And obviously, I don't think anyone expected them to wait until the last lap. Certainly, I didn't, but they did, and. It unfortunately did not work out, but that's the big thing out of today. I mean, I'm not sure if it's really news because, like I said, they did say they are going to talk things over, but there is some heat between the two after the Daytona 500. So I do here have some Daytona 500 reactions. This is from my Instagram story. You can follow me on Instagram, at NASCAR Images. I basically put up, I want to hear your thoughts on the Daytona 500. And here are some of the replies I got. This person here said, Was a snooze fest after those two big accidents part of the game, sadly? And, by the way, all these reactions are pretty similar, but I'm going to go through them anyway. And uh, I'm not sure what the other big accident he's talking about. I guess maybe the, the Christopher Bell, uh, when he had a flat tire there, at, uh, I think it was at, somewhere in Stage 2. But, uh, yeah, obviously, uh, I think it's what I talked about on Sunday night or Monday morning, whenever I last did a show, that I mean that that lap 15 wreck it kind of set the tone, and these guys they did not want to they did not want to race as hard because they didn't. I mean, if we all wrecked at lap 15, we're bound to wreck again at lap 94 or 155 or or you know 190, whenever. Uh, this person here just says garbage. Well. <laughs> This person here says, great and chaos. And this person here says, bore until the end because of the big wreck on lap 15. This person here said, awesome winner, that's it. This person here said, good last 20 laps. I'm not so sure I can agree with the last 20 laps. It was a good finish, but there was really not much else to the race. This person here says, boring racing due to the single file line, Na not NASCAR's fault though, great finish. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think a lot more people are, there are more people mad about this, or at least madder about it than I was, because 
I was sitting there with the mindset of things are going to pick up around 30 to 40 laps to go. And I think some of these fans, they expected, you know, pack racing all throughout. So they're sitting there watching, you know, 170, 180 laps of these guys just running single file line. And, you know, I wasn't getting mad about it because I expected it. I expected them to run single file at some point. And I was expecting it to pick up around 30, 40 laps ago. So I really didn't start getting mad about it until right around that point. But a lot of people overall just hated the race completely. And this person here finally says it was crazy and wet. Well, it was certainly wet. I, the, the last lap, like I said, was crazy. And obviously the first 15 laps were were exciting. But other than that, I wouldn't say it was a crazy race. It was a crazy finish. But. And there you go. Those are some of the reactions from fans. And so that's the Daytona 500. I mean, Michael McDowell, he's been doing media all this week. And he's the Daytona 500 champion. He's in the playoffs. Hard to believe. But he is, in fact, in the playoffs. And I don't really, I mean, I don't expect him to be a contender in terms of, like, he probably won't even make it to the, the round of 12. But who knows? I mean, who knows? We've, we've seen stranger things, but... I, you know, Front Row Motorsports, they've always been at a certain level, and they're, they're good restrict plate cars, they're decent on the road courses, but I just don't, I don't really expect them to get good at, you know, mile and a half tracks or, or short tracks or things like that. So there you go, it's time to talk about this weekend, the Daytona road course. We're still in Daytona, everybody, and if you check the odds for this Daytona road course to race. I don't have it pulled up here, but I just looked at it. The top two favorites, you'll be no surprise to know that Chase Elliott is the favorite to win the Daytona road course this weekend. And he has won, going for his sixth consecutive road course win. And he won the Daytona road course last August, holding off Denny Hamlin for the win. And he is your defending cup champion, of course. And so... No surprise, he is the favorite, as well he should be. And second favorite, Martin Truex Jr. at a 3-1 to one odds. And then third favorite is Denny Hamlin at 10-1 to one odds. Now for me, my pick to win, I mean, it's going to be... Here's the thing. Obviously a safe pick would be Chase Elliott. I mean, Chase Elliott has been the road course king. And... You know, like I said, he's won five consecutive road course races. It would be hard to get bet against him. But I just I just have a feeling something's going to happen to the nine car on Sunday. He's going to be leading a lot of laps. And whether he gets in a wreck or he speeds on pit road or he spins the tires on a restart and falls back in traffic, I just think something's going to happen to him. And I say that because, you know, you see guys that dominate races, and they dominate races, and they lead a bunch of laps, and they're out front by four, five, six seconds, and then something just happens. We see it all the time. And Chase is going for his sixth consecutive road course win. That's a hard feat to pull off. I just have a feeling something's going to happen to him. And I don't know what it'll be. Like I said, it'll be some sort of... Uh, issue. I hope not as a Chase fan. I hope that doesn't happen. But just knowing the pattern of, of these races, uh, I just don't expect it. And I think he'll obviously run very good, but I don't think he's going to win. And I think Martin Truex Jr. is going to win. I think Martin Truex Jr. is a very good road course racer. He's won at Sonoma multiple times. He's run well there. He's run well at Watkins Glen. And he led some laps in that that clash at the Daytona Road Course. And so I expect Martin Truex Jr. to win on Sunday. Just signed a new deal with Joe Gibbs Racing, multi-year deal. And what better way to kick that off than a win at the Daytona Road Course. And it'll be interesting to see because this race is not going to be, obviously, on the nighttime road course. It's going to be during the day. And, you know, the Daytona Road Course, it wasn't much wasn't much of a race last year. I mean, it was all right, but, um, you know, close finish between Chase and Denny Hamlin. But 
we'll see. I I don't expect I don't expect it to be as exciting as like the Roval. The Roval's usually pretty exciting, but I I expect it to be an, an average race, a decent race. I don't think you're going to see too many cautions. But overall, I think Martin Trex Jr. is going to win. So there you go. A.J. Allmendinger, by the way, is also in the field, and he is a 17-1 to favorite for Cully Grayson in the, in the cup race. He's also, of course, running the Xfinity race, but what a story that would be if A.J. Allmendinger could, could win again in the cup series. But I think Martin Truex Jr. gets his first win of 2021. The Xfinity race is on Saturday, and, of course, Austin Sindrick coming off the win at Daytona. He won the Daytona Road Course Xfinity race last year. But this time around, I'm expecting A.J. Allmendinger to win this one. And A.J. is now full-time in the Xfinity series. And so, I mean, if, if you want to really show these guys you're going to be a contender this year, I think it would be big for him to win the Daytona Road Course. And he's a good road course racer, obviously. He won the Charlotte Roval in the rain last year and he's won of course Watkins Glen in the Cup Series he's won Mid-Ohio in the Xfinity Series he's won Road America so I expect AJ Allmendinger to get the win this Saturday in the Xfinity race and kick off with a win and put himself right up there with Austin Sindrick the only other driver locked into the playoffs I expect Sindrick to run good but I think AJ Allmendinger is going to win and, of course, we have the truck race tonight, the nighttime road course. This is going to be fun, I have a feeling. I mean, the the trucks on road courses, I mean, we've, we've seen the Canadian Tire Motorsports Park provide us with a lot of classic finishes. And I think a nighttime road course for some drivers that aren't very experienced. There's no Kyle Busch in the field. A bunch of drivers not very experienced on road courses. I think it's going to be a really fun race to watch. And my pick to win, I'm going to go with Sheldon Creed. I mean, it's it's really hard to pick between these drivers, like I said, because a lot of them are not very experienced on road courses. But Sheldon Creed won the Daytona road course race in the trucks last year. And so he is also your defending champion. So I expect him to be up front tonight, lead a bunch of laps, and probably win the race. So it'll be interesting to see how Haley Deegan does as well, making her uh, road course debut in the truck series, her third career start. And Ben Rhodes, of course, coming off the win at Daytona. It'll be interesting to see how he does. And so, yeah, there you go. So tonight I expect Sheldon Creed to go to victory lane and kick off his championship defending season with a win in the Daytona road course. And, I mean... The, the thing with, with going from the super speedway to the road course is we're really not going to get a sense of who's going to be, you know, in contention, you know, who's going to be a big factor to deal with all year. And what I mean by that is, is we're not going to a mile and a half like Atlanta or Las Vegas or going to a big track like California to really get a sense of, you know, who's going to be strong on these certain type of tracks. I mean... You go to the super speedways only four times a year. Now, there are many more road courses this year, but, uh, you know, every road course is different. So it's hard to say who's going to be good and who's not. You can kind of have an idea, like, you know, Chase Elliott's going to be good. You know, Mark Trix Jr. is going to be good. But, you know, it, it's it's hard to say. And it's it's always, I always think, like, the first five races of the year, you really get a sense of, Okay, these are the guys that are being contention for the championship. And last year, I mean, who won the second race last year? Second race of the year at Las Vegas it was Joey Logano. And Joey Logano was in the championship four. I mean, you look at 2019, Brad Keselowski won the second race of the year. And, you know, he didn't get to the championship four, but he was a factor, you know, all year long. You go to 2018, Kevin Harvick won Atlanta the second race of the year. And he ended up winning... I think seven more races in 2018, had eight wins, had a shot at the championship. So, I mean, I just think these early races, they, they really dictate, you know, who's going to be strong 
uh, all year long. Who's going to be the guys to beat? And I'm not so sure we're going to get that at the Daytona Road Course because, like I said, you know, we are going to more road courses, but they're all different. And they're not the mile and a half. They're not the one-mile tracks or the two-mile tracks. So we're really not going to get a sense of, you know, who's going to be, you know, competing for the championship or be a force to be reckoned with, I should say, throughout the year until we get to Homestead. I think Homestead's going to be the first true test. That is the third race in the season. And that's really where we're going to see uh, who's going to be the factors uh, to deal with the championship contenders in 2021. But that's it. It's going to be a lot of right and left turns this weekend. Should be a lot of hopefully exciting racing. And I will be back either Sunday night or Monday morning. I haven't decided yet, but one of those times to come on and recap all the action from the Daytona Road Course. And that is it. Everybody have a great day.